Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge. So we're moving on to more of the Doom board game. We're going to knock out all of the slimy, gnarly, big red strawberry monsters, the Cacodemons. These are actually going to be really, 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 really easy. There's not going to be much to them. I might overcomplicate it a little bit with the pink, as you'll see there, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing that we will have done is actually something that is very different from the previous minis that we that we have done so far. So for everything we've done white base coats, and what you're actually gonna do with the Caco Demons, or at least that I think is going to be the easiest thing to do, is actually start with a red base coat for the Caco Demons. And to do that, I used this Dragon Red right here. Now, as far as I know, there is a, prim there is a, a spray primer version of this available. That's actually why it says 100% match to color primer there. So if you want to save time, you can get like a spray primer and you know spray it over all of the caco demons like that and uh, that'll just save a little bit of time i didn't have that readily available uh but it still saves time to just do a base coat using uh the color that i had there as a brush primer than it would be to do a spray primer of white and then do you know the different things that we're going to do from there so just start with a base coat of that dragon red and then i also used matte black for the base right there and that just knocked out all of the bases for all of them all right now, these guys are going to be a little bit fun because the very first thing that we're going to do right off the bat is something that's actually a little bit complicated. Now, don't worry about it. It's not going to be too bad. What we're going to do is we're actually going to be combining and blending some colors here. Uh, if we're going to be using the Army Painter Mega Paint Set, the 50 Paint Set, there's not a great sort of pale pink skin color that comes with it. So we're going to make our own. What we're going to use is we're going to combine the Skeleton Bone and Warlock Purple. And what you're actually going to do is you're going to use about three parts, three or four parts Skeleton Bone to one part Warlock Purple. So you're looking at about a three to one or four to one ratio. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put it into a little, little tiny kind of thing here rather than put it on our plastic surface just because to mix the paint you're going to need to mix it all up and, and take up a lot of space and if you just do that along a flat surface it's going to take up a lot of your surface and we don't necessarily want that um so i'll just squeeze you know a few few drops out something like that there we go that's that's a pretty good bulbous amount and yeah like i said you actually want to use proportionally far less purple because even though it's a pink color, it's a very, very pale pink color. And this is a very, very, very strong color that will, will really, really cause a lot of coloration on there. Yeah, something like that. So again, you're looking, yeah, maybe that's even like a 4 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio. Uh, you can also just sort of play around with it until you get the, uh, the color that you want. And what you can do too is you can just water it down a little bit. You can take out some, some water like this and... Uh, you know, I'm just going to use a random no-name big brush right here. And actually, rather than soak up all the bristles on my paintbrush, I'm just going to use the end of a, of a paintbrush right here. And we'll use that to mix it. So I'll just add a little drop on the end of it there. And then we're just going to mix all this up. We'll just sort of swirl it around, mix it up, get it till it has, you know, the about the same sort of consistency all around. I think I can add just a little bit more pink. Just a little bit, not too much. I think I'll add a little bit more. There we go, we'll see what that does. There we go, that's giving it a little bit more of a, of a rosier sort of tint. There we go. Yeah, basically you just want to use a really, really, really pale color so that skeleton bone works out really well for that and then you're going to take that pink color right there and you're just going to mix it and that will give you that really pale rosy pink color and that's what we're looking for uh, with regard to the sort of soft tissue of the caco demons which we'll go over when I pick up the first one here now uh, it doesn't really matter what brush you use from here on out I'll go ahead and just continue using the the basic brush that came with the army painter set itself all right, now we're gonna go ahead and get started here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the sort of area above the lips, underneath the eyes, and then everything underneath and sort of wrapping 
downward and around to the back here, and then these big, veiny, sort of bulbous spots back here. You're going to go ahead and color. And that wraps up a little bit. If we look at the original art of the 3D model, it kind of blends with these smaller, sort of bulbous sacks up top here. So that's what we're going to do. All right, now, I'm also going to water down my brush very, very substantially because you don't want it to be too thick because you're going to be blending this into the red. So what I'll do is I'll just take, you know, my, my water like this. I'll get get my brush nice and wet and I'll just dip a little bit of, uh, of it into my paint puddle right there and that should water it down pretty substantially. And if you need to, you can go back and forth between the water and the mini if you're if your paint is just a little bit too thick. All right. Try not to go too crazy. Like here, my brush is already pretty, pretty wet, actually. Another thing that you can do too is you can actually use a little bit of a dry brushing technique for this if you want. So you could, here, like, let's uh, let's actually show that just a little bit here. So let's say we wanted to do a little bit of dry brushing. You can take your Army Painter dry brush, if I can find it, what do I do with it? What you can do is you can take your, your you know, your dry brush and similar to similarly to what we did previously, you can just take a little bit of paint you're going to wipe off most of it, and then you can just sort of lightly go over all of the all of the spots that we're talking about here. The only thing that will happen when you do that is that it will have sort of a dustier look to it. You know, you can kind of compare the, you know, right there. I'm doing here the, the two sort of bulbous sacks on the side here, and you can compare that to what I did up here with these other ones. Louise, oh, I've got a cat on the table. This is a different cat from before. This is Louise. Come on, down. I, for a long time, I have always sort of preferred dry brushing. Although when it comes to the techniques that you want to do, it is entirely up to you. That's the thing is that these minis are your minis and you can paint them however you like. I just want to show you all of the techniques that you know you could do, or at least all the techniques that I know that you can do, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best painter, but you know, I'm, I'm okay. I think that I'm a pretty decent painter and, uh, I like to just do easy paint jobs. So, you know, I'll just, I'll show you a couple of options and you can sort of decide from there what your best course of action is. Yeah, this is, I think that also doing this is a little bit faster. I'm still not very good at the, at the wet blending just yet, but it's, you know, again, it's, it's up to you as far as what you want to do. Yeah, you can do that. You can, again, you can use the, the wet blending technique or the dry brushing technique, whichever you prefer. But in any case, we're going to go ahead and do the, the backs of them. You know, like I said, these, these bulbous areas. You're going to do the sort of underbelly like this. And you're going to bring that up and underneath the lip. And then we're going to do the top of the face sort of blending the upper lip and the eye. So yeah, you can do either technique there, whichever one you want to do. I think that either one will work out pretty well, whether you want to do the dry brushing or if you want to do the wet blending. I'm going to rinse off my dry brush and I will do a wet blending technique for one of the other ones just to show you how that goes. Another thing that you'll kind of notice as you do the wet blending technique is that as it dries, it tends to sort of blend more naturally together. See, like here, the lines are a little bit more defined between, you know, the pink and the red, but as it dries, it will sort of soften up a little bit. So if it doesn't look quite right right away, don't panic too much. Just give it, you know, a minute or two to fully dry and it will start to blend a little bit better. The wet blending technique is probably going to be a little bit easier for getting the underbelly of the cacodemon, so you can 
sort of keep that into consideration when you're deciding whether or not you want to do the the wet blending or the dry brushing. Don't worry about getting a little bit of paint onto the eyeball because we're just going to go ahead and paint over the eye with the green color when we get there later on. So don't worry about that. All right, and yeah, so that's that's one of the Kako Demons right there. So yeah, that, that kind of highlights a little bit of a difference between the wet blending and the dry brushing. It's just kind of whichever one you want to do. Um, I would say that the wet blending is a little bit more difficult, but probably gives you the better result. You know, it's just, it's, it's so it's sort of up to you. Sort of think about what your strengths and weaknesses are with the brush and, and what you want to do and just sort of decide from there if you want to do the dry brushing where you'll get, you know, the sort of, like I said, the almost sort of dusty look, or if you want to do, and you know, like I said, I started with wet blending here, that's why these look a little bit different on each side, uh, and you know, if you just want to blend them like that. That is 100% up to you. So we're just going to do that with the other ca two Capo Demons, and then we're going to move on. Alright, so I think we've got all of the sort of pinkness on our Kako Demons pretty much done. Yeah, so we've got some nice bulbous backs on them there. Yeah, those look pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to rinse off my brush completely. I'm also going to go ahead and move this little thingy out of the way here, just to get that out of the way for what we're doing next. Alright, next we're going to just move on to something a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more, you know, self-explanatory and shouldn't be too, too difficult or or too complicated or anything like that. We're just gonna move on to the teeth and the horns. Now the Cacodemons especially, looking at the uh, original 3D model work there, have sort of yellowish uh, or uh, yellowish teeth. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and really just hit those yellow teeth home. So we're going to use this elven flesh color. We've used it for many minis so far now. But yeah, it's just a nice sort of, yeah, like yellowish, you know, kind of color. And I think that it will work great for some nasty, gnarly cacodemon teeth. So we'll just uh, continue to use our Army Painter brush that uh, we had with the set. And, you know, you can just sort of go over all of the teeth. If you want, you can... So I guess there are a couple of ways you can do this. Number one, you can just sort of paint each individual tooth, which is sort of what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to you know, go over each little tooth, and it's not too terribly difficult because, fortunately, the teeth are very prominent and they're pretty large. So it's not very difficult to just go over each tooth individually like what I'm doing right here. Okay, so yeah, you can do something like that for all of them. Gotta be careful, like the, it's still a little bit wet on the back here. Um, you can do that. You know, you can just paint over each little tooth individually. You know, I would honestly say if you have the time and you want to do it, I would say just do that, go ahead. Uh, it helps to get some practice down to just sort of paint, you know, somewhat intricate details, you know, uh, just just for practice and all that. And luckily, these teeth, they're, they're not super small, you know, they, they, they're not going to be extremely time-consuming or, or daunting uh, in terms of the details. And even if you do mess them up a little bit, like let's say you get a little bit of paint onto one of the teeth right next to one of the other teeth, then the wash that we're going to use at the end should balance that out. And that's what I'll get into in a minute here, is that as opposed to doing each little tooth individually, you can just go ahead and use a larger brush and you can just paint all of the rows of teeth all at once. It's a much quicker way to do it. Um, now, it may be, eh, you know, it, it's, again, it's just sort of whatever you want to do. Uh, we're going to use the, the flesh wash at the end of all of this, so that will help to separate the various components. That'll help to seep into the little crevices in between the teeth to separate them. Um, but here, we'll, we'll even just, well, let's, let's do that. Let's do that with the bottom row of teeth for this Kako Demon. So I'll just use a larger brush here. It doesn't really matter. You know what? Uh, and yeah, let's just go ahead and paint all of the teeth all at once, basically. 
want to avoid the tongue there. By the way, one thing that is going to be very difficult about uh, these miniatures is it's going to be really hard to get the inside of the mouths there. There you can kind of see the original sort of tan plastic color that the minis had, and that's just because whether you've got a primer or whether you've got a brush, it's it doesn't, you know, it's just difficult to get inside the mouth there because the mouth isn't very wide open compared to sort of what you would expect. Uh, but that's okay because, you know, they're so... It's so hard to see inside the mouth that even if you leave it completely unpainted, I don't think most people will notice. So that's just one thing that's worth addressing that, you know, will either, you know, I, I wouldn't say it should bother you. You know, it might bother you a little bit, but I would honestly just say don't even worry about it. Okay, and th there you go. So that just, you know, paints the entire bottom row of teeth right there. And we'll do the, the side rows here. The really, really big sort of fangs that it has, uh, make sure you get all around all of the teeth there. Because they're very big and round, there's a lot of surface area around them. So you may think, okay, I've got the fangs done, but then you look at it at a different angle and, you know, one side of it is completely unpainted. So just make sure that you look at the teeth from all angles to make sure that you get all of them painted from every which direction. Just one little thing to keep in mind. Okay, so that's it for one of our Cacodemon's teeth right there. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do all of the horns as well. There we go, a little, little something like that. And we're just going to go ahead and do that with all of the horns. All right, and that's pretty much all that you're looking for with the horns. Now... There's one thing that is worth addressing, and that's that the Mini itself actually has far more horns on... Oh, I guess they're the sort of prominent ones on the on the backs, on the back here. So we'll just go ahead and knock them out real quick. But regarding this Mini, there are actually a lot of sort of bony horn sort of growths coming out. They're just not quite as prominent. So, like you could kind of see that almost the spine has all sorts of them, and then you can see some on the top here, these little sort of like almost pimple-looking things. I think those are also supposed to be horns. Now, if you want to take the time to paint those, you can. I would say if, like I said though, you just want the easy paint job and you, you want just a simple, like, table-ready sort of presentation, I wouldn't even worry about it. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. I think that you just want to knock out the main horns on the body, which are the ones that we've done so far. You know, these ones on the side. Like this. And then these, you know, these these really prominent ones, like, on the, on the front side kind of thing. I would say that those are the only ones that you really need to worry about. If you want, again, if you want to take the time, if you want to take the extra credit, you can go through all of the different ones. You can just sort of, you know dot each each little horn there that's up to you though i'm not going to do that just because uh, you know i just kind of want these to be to be table ready and you know i want to show you when they're ready here that i don't think it's going to make a huge deal if you leave them just red but it's just something that is worth addressing whether you want to deal with it or not is entirely up to you they are your minis when you paint them you get to do whatever you want with them that's one of the best things about painting miniatures you can do whatever you want there we go so now we've got our nice sort of horns all around our caco demons or de demon just the one right now and we're just going to do that with all the other ones uh so just go ahead and do the horns and the teeth and all that good stuff um i'll go ahead and just do all of the teeth all as all at once just kind of like i was talking about earlier like i said if you want to take the time to paint each individual tooth just to get some practice on some like small details and sort of minute work. It's a good good thing to do that with because they're hard to mess up and even if you do get a little bit of paint on the surrounding teeth, the wash that we use at the end of it should make up for that so I wouldn't even worry about it. All right, there we go. So now we've got all of our horns and teeth and all of our different little growths coming out of our caco demons. Those look good. Okay. All right. And then, you know, to be honest, there's not a lot else to do. 
Um, so like I said, the big thing is that if you really wanted to take the time, you could do all of the different little little growths and all that with the uh, with the Kakudim, you know, these these little spots right here and all that. You know, you could make you could paint those with the with the elven flesh color if you want, but you don't have to. Like I said, it's probably going to save a little bit of time if anything. Um, but that's all that we're going to do there. So now we're going to move on to the eye, and we're just going to use this real bright jungle green color because they do have very striking bright green eyes. All right, and let's use the, the standard brush that came with our set. And yeah, just going to really lightly just, you know, take a little drop here and just coat the eye, and that's really all that there is to it. All right, that's pretty much all that you need to do. You just gotta get that big, bright green eye on there. So we're just gonna do that four times. All right, and now we've got our eyes on there. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a flesh wash on there. We're just gonna do a wash to add some shade, and then we're gonna add a varnish, and then that'll be it. So we, yeah, the cacodemons are actually gonna be pretty simple if you just start with a base coat of that red color. All right, so we're just going to use the flesh wash that we used for the imps and the cyber soldiers, the uh, the possessed soldiers, and we're just going to use that on all of our caco demons, and that'll be it. All right, and I would advise watering down the the wash just a little bit before you get started. Uh oh, I'm knocking everything down. Okay, there we go. It's fine. Okay, and I would advise watering it down just a little bit. Take, you know, your brush, just dip it in water, mix it in a little bit. There we go. And then just get to it. Just take your time with it. You know, if, if you go too fast, you can get bubbles forming and that kind of thing, which we want to try to avoid. But uh, just take your time, go over basically every, everything on the miniature, and you're going to add some shade and some shadows. And you see, here's what I'm saying about how even if you just go over all of the teeth with a single color, the shade will kind of separate them like that. You see how that already kind of kind of sets the the teeth apart, uh, which is great. I'm gonna do the eye last, just because I just painted those eyes, so they might still be kind of wet. All right. And then there you go, that's pretty much all that you need for the Caco Demon right there, and we're just going to go ahead and do that three more times. We're just going to get an even layer of that Flesh Wash across all of our Caco Demons. And then after that, we're going to make sure that they are completely dry. So, after you finish up a layer of this Flesh Wash, just give them plenty of time to fully dry, because we're going to go over them with a, with a varnish, and you don't want for that wash to be really wet while you're going over it. So give them time to, to dry after you finish the flesh wash, and then we'll move on to the varnish. All right, and there we go. So now our caco demons are all nice and dry. That's pretty much it. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna do, a, a, I would say it's a purely optional thing. You can do it, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. And that's that we're gonna put a layer of varnish on all of them. So I think that the caco demons themselves, uh, like a lot of the um, monsters in Doom 2016, are very, very wet and very slimy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the gloss varnish for the actual caco demons themselves, and then we're going to do a uh, anti-shine matte varnish on the actual bases. And I've done that a few times on the video, so I'll spare you here, but I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then that'll be it! All right, so there you go, everybody. Those are the Doom Caco Demons. They are nice and slimy. They've got that fleshy pink and red kind of look to them. I think that that's pretty much exactly the kind of thing that we're looking for right there. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw it a like. If you want to see the rest of the Doom board game getting painted, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I think that next week I'm going to knock out all of the pinky demons, although we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we're doing. If somebody wants to see one of the particular monsters up next, I am open to suggestions or requests. So just let me know if you do want to see anything other than the Pinky Demons. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else much to say. That's pretty much it. So we'll see you next time on Easy Mini Painting, and have a good night.